talked about this show and his artwork all night, but I'm not going to. Yay. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, the first piece I saw of John's was a, a soldier painting, and it was actually online. And I kept looking at it and I thought, that looks like a photograph, but it's a painting. I kept thinking, you know, going over and I thought, wow. The technical skill in all these works is immaculate. Uh, and then after I got over that, I looked at the subject matter and I thought, well, it's fun. Uh, and I kind of looked through his other works and I thought, well, I think I'll have good appeal for kids, uh, school tours, that kind of thing. And then I thought, well, people who have children and older generations, some of these toys, you know, maybe you all had as children <laughs> or your kids definitely had it. So I thought, well, man, you know, great appeal. Uh, so it just, it all made sense. Uh, so, uh, really, I just challenge each and every one of you to kind of back away from the painting uh, and just kind of look at it and then kind of come in. I've been looking at these images for who knows how long now. And, you know, since they've been up and I've been looking at them, I find something new every time. Uh, so, you know, come back, come back often. It'll be here. It is free, so you know. Um, but, you know, that's enough from me. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce John Hartley. Here he is. Hi, my name is John Hartley. Uh, I got my cheat sheets here. Actually, I want to make sure I thank, I, I actually cut my teeth in the art museum world. And um, so what I mean by that is this is how I used to pay my bills for my apartment, my gas, electric, and so forth, hanging artworks. So I realize what goes into a art museum show. It is a lot of work. Um, of course, I'd like to uh, thank Christopher, the director. Um, and yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, join the art museum because if you do come to Fort Worth, you probably bought your membership. Uh, you'll get into the Modern Art Museum. I went to New York and I've got a, a membership at the um, Modern in Fort Worth, and yeah, I didn't have to pay any money. It was pretty wonderful. Um, Stephanie Harris, which is the um, registrar. registrar, thank you. Um, and like I said, so many people are uh, important. She arranged uh, for the travel of the pieces to get here, make sure nothing got damaged, had to take you know, uh, copious notes on any scratches that were done before that they were here. So. Uh, a lot of stuff um, that you guys don't see uh, definitely goes into these exhibitions. And then Caleb Bell. <laughs> Caleb Bell was a curator for the show, and you have to also realize that this art museum, a lot of people are wearing many different hats too. So on this particular exhibi exhibition, uh, Caleb was a curator. And what that means is he selected the artwork. He actually wrote a essay about it. He had to put his own thoughts into it. And, as an artist, this is actually what I'm trying to get you to do, is to put your own interpretations and thought into it, and we'll talk about that in a couple minutes, maybe. Um, the other people I'd like to thank is Jim and Patty Krause. They're, they loaned the Indian back to uh, the Art Museum for this exhibition, and um, Michael uh, Doran, which um, loaned the um, this piece right here, um, What's that called, Gunner? Gunner. 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 Yeah, I've painted so many of them. The, I think Caleb knows the titles better than I do. So, uh, I don't know what that's saying about me, but uh, obviously um, Caleb's really smart. Um, Sorry. <laughs> wow. Tough crowd. Tough, it is tough crowd. <laughs> I think one in particular over here. Uh, also, would like to thank my family and friends, too. They're really supportive of me. Uh, supportive. Um, actually, my mother and father-in-law braved the. Uh, we had a heck of a ride down here. It was a two and a half, or two and a half, should have been a two and a half hour drive down here. It turned out to be four and a half, five hour drive with the snow and everything. And and um, yeah, they started out at ten o'clock and got here. From where? Uh, Fort Worth. I'm sorry, Fort Worth. Oh. Yes. Um, Today? Lot, yesterday. Yesterday. No, I, if we've stayed up there, I don't think we'd be here today. It's, it's, a, it's a mess up there, uh, for sure. Uh, a lot of times I tell my uh, in-laws I can't do something, can't come to a family function because I'm working on this stuff, and they pretty much put up with it. 
and sometimes they know I'm just trying to get out of that family function. <laughs> I'm sure none of you have ever done that before. The artwork, I will be giving a uh, more of a formal lecture, oops, uh, April 16th, April 16th. <laughs> okay. um, and you're all invited to that, yes. correct? Okay. Two o'clock. Well, I guess I should have found out some of this information before. Uh, yeah. Um, so you'll hear a lot of the backstories. On it. I, I can talk about my artwork a little bit if you'd like to, to know. Um, okay. Uh, actually, I used to be a high school teacher um, 15 years ago, and when I gave my first lecture, uh, actually when I had my first show, uh, it was called the Contemporary Art Museum of Fort Worth. Uh, I was known as a really slow painter, and they said I was going to die uh, with one painting, and it actually wasn't going to be finished because I wouldn't, you know. Um, so I actually committed to having a whole show. There was a really uh, generous patron that she actually uh, rented this building, and she rented a whole gallery, and that was hers, and she insisted that only Fort Worth artists could uh, use be selected for that. So I was actually selected and I thought, gosh, I don't think I can pull off 12 paintings. I only had like three months to do this. Mm -hmm. And I actually committed to it and that's actually changed my whole life. Um, and then they, um, I was asked to do a public talk and I was so shy I could barely say hi to anybody. I'd say hi and then turn red. I know I'm really red now, but uh, <laughs> I'd say hi and then leave. Um, <laughs> And I was told I'd be crazy if I didn't do a talk. And if any of you are artists, you know that being an artist these days, you have to, you have to be able to talk about your work in public. Um, so anyhow, I turned it around. I actually asked the audience what these paintings meant to them. And I asked the specific question that I asked to my high school. See, I got back to that high school when I was a high school teacher, part of the story. I asked my high school teachers, what uh, students, what this was about. Is it about play? or is it about reality of war? And then I begged somebody to please answer. <laughs> so which one of you would like to save my cookies? <laughs> really? Is it gonna work? If no one else yeah, go ahead. Maybe. It's all about play with me. Uh, yes. I, I, had, I had enough war, and um, so it's all about play. Okay. So you had the reality of the, of the war also then. I think it's play too. I have little grandchildren that still play with those little figures. <laughs> yeah, you know, these figures, the same ones that I play with, the plastic figures, those are the same ones that are being made today. Oh. So you think, yeah, I've saved my child's uh, plastic army figure, it's gonna be worth something. It turns out they're using the same molds, so. <laughs> <laughs> no go on that. Anybody uh, hit you as war? Or? I'll throw something out there. Okay. The, the gunner over there? Yeah. Freaks me out. It's pretty menacing. Yeah, it's yeah, right. I guess, yeah, it just, uh, a lot of these I can, like that one and this one, I, I get the feeling of play. That one, I get the distinct sense of violence. And he is, yeah, he is meant to be, I mean, you look down at, you know, yeah. gun barrel, and he is meant to, to maybe, art, art's not always pretty. Sometimes it is meant to evoke emotion. That's all there is to it. And I love, um, uh, Chris, um, when he, he had a television interview that I got to watch online, unfortunately now anything you do is online. In fact, this is probably online as we're, we're speaking. So, um, and he was talking about things were really accessible and I like the fact that they are accessible. So for, it doesn't matter what age you are, you may relate to it or, uh, and it doesn't matter whether you relate to it as toy or about politics. Getting back to what he said about accessible, though, if you start reading the titles of these pieces, then all of a sudden there's a little bit, what's the title of this one? Is it called? Night uh, Terror. Night Terror. Night Terror. See, I was just seeing if I get them. Uh, I knew this. Sorry. One. I knew this. No, you were, because you never know whether I know the answer or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Night Terror. So if you did serve in the military and just came home a week ago, uh, Night Terror may be something you're dealing with now. And I. I teach at a community college and I taught at UT where I have uh, a lot of veterans that are, you know, pretty recently out of the out of uh, the war zone. And there were times at UTA about 10, uh, six, seven years ago, if somebody dropped a book, somebody may be hitting the ceiling. 
you know, there were a couple people I had special files on that they may have to take a break and go to the hallway. So uh, there's so many different um, different levels, and and all I'm saying to you is that on those complicated works of art, I'm not talking about mine, but if you go up and read the title, sometimes that can be a big indicator of what the artist wants you to think. Now, for me, I want you to plug in your own experiences. That's all there is to it. So um, the ones uh, like you, you're absolutely right. And you were absolutely right, whoever answered over there about being play or about politics. And it, even if you were talking about different images, it would have been still perfectly uh, the correct answer. Questions from you guys? I have one. Yeah. Your art is big. Mm -hmm. And obviously, some of your subjects are small. How do you how did you choose the size of the canvas that you were going to? Yeah, um, I I shoot my uh, my toys with a camera. Um, I'm 57. It seems like every day it's a different challenge to see things. You know, where's the? Uh, so sometimes when I see that photograph, it, it really kind of demands to be bigger. And it also, um, it also sometimes it, am I trying to make a political statement like these? I've, I've got one that's called um, Toy Box Guernica that was a middle size one. And I just felt like it really demanded to be on a bigger canvas that it wouldn't be as effective uh, small. Now, small uh, can be very effective too, like the mirror painting or how big is the Mona Lisa? Anybody know? Is it, yeah, it's it's really it's really small. A lot of us, um, when I ask my students how big it is, a lot of them think it's really huge because you know it's got this huge uh, storage and story behind it. You know, it's it's an icon, and we've seen it reproduced big, big. Yeah, probably more often than we've ever seen it in actual size. So. Um, yeah, the size, uh, sometimes it's just by the reproduction. Sometimes, uh, after I photograph it, the reproduction, sometimes the size is, uh, to be quite honest, the canvas I have available. <laughs> <laughs> and the energy. <laughs> so it can go either way. Other questions? Is, the, is your concern more with subject matter or the in my mind it goes hand in hand that if I have um, I tell my students this all the time for a work to be you know grading work you think is really hard to do as a teacher and it is somewhat but there is some criteria we can use and if it's well crafted and then composition and design if it's bad placement on the page, even though you're a really great painter, is still not going to be effective. So the two, in my mind, are hand in hand. The other third part of that is interesting subject matter, and that's where it becomes a little bit more subjective. Like uh, Caleb, as a curator, um, he uh, related to this where another curator may not have, you know, to the toy images. Uh, also, Caleb's got a really good eye, and he plays with composition when he laid this out. And in fact, when you look at the gunner here, and the, uh, I haven't had this conversation, and, and it may have been luck, but I, I think this happened too much in this gallery to be luck. He's got the uh, flare gun, the gas mask, pointing toward the uh, gun over here. Now, he would have these, this one would have been pointing to the corner, it wouldn't have been as pleasing as layout. You wouldn't have went home and said, wow, Caleb sure did miss it on the, on the layout. But uh, yeah, so that that's, uh, is a gift of uh, curator. You know, it's got that gift of, and everybody doesn't have that gift, and it doesn't matter whether you have that curator's title either. Some curators just don't have this, the, the touch. He did the same thing here. Think about he, he took these two paintings and swapped them. These guns would be in the corner. They wouldn't have as much action, so he opened it all up. So, so I consider the uh, design and the, and the subject matter. Um, yes, yes. But content's a big one for me too. The painting that's behind there, 
the two cowboys. What's the title of that? Second Amendment. Second, Second Amendment. Amendment. What's Second Amendment? Black and Brown. Yeah. So uh, there's content there. So am I anti or pro uh, gun? Yes. yes. Okay. Anti, <laughs> anti. Raise your hands. Oh. Uh, pro. Raise your hand. No anti and all pro. Okay. So can you keep a secret? No, you knew this coming, so can I. <laughs> Actually, I may talk about that during my uh, talk. I may give you a little bit more clue on that. And I may not. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it, you know, just a little teaser to try and get you to come out. Uh, I don't think I'm going to, uh, I don't think we're going to change each other's mind. I think we all want to say cool. And I think that we all want to probably use our guns for uh, sporting uh, things too. And you know, I have so no problem think, with that. He's, excuse me, he's making that particular opinion if he stands on your psychology and hearing the same guy that's getting shot, the good guy or a bad guy. Right. So that's, that's and I'll tell you what I found out uh, from my students the ones that are pro guns, they always think that I'm on their side. The ones that are anti guns, they always think that I'm on their side because, you know, they, they kind of enjoy me. I'm kind of a, you know, 12 year old kid in the classroom and everything. So, uh, yeah. Why toys? Why toys? Um, actually, it kind of happened like a lot of things, you know, uh, like scientists. Uh, finds a lot of, uh, solves a lot of different problems in the world by accident. And I came, kind of came up with it by accident too. I was uh, painting my wife uh, for a subject matter, went through figures, actually painted my file wall too. Um, a lot of people didn't necessarily like the way I had them posed and the, the uh, uh, stories, the narrative that I was uh, putting with the painting. And I just stumbled on a plastic soldier and I liked the fact that I could make uh, political statements and still could have something fun and accessible and that there would be these multi layers for all different ages and groups. Um, and it's just been fun and I'm a 12 year old. <laughs> I'm a 12 year old. When you look at me at first, you know I'm 57 or older, but when you're around me, it's like, really? You know, yeah, I'm a 12 year old. Yes, ma'am. I was interested in the helmets. That looks like World War One. Yes. And this looks like a German helmet. Yeah. This yeah. looks like World War Two. Yeah. So your toys are. Yep, they, they uh, are uh, probably nothing from. Uh, well, actually, I guess the Vietnam era, we probably would have used about the same thing in the army, uh, but you wouldn't have seen the you wouldn't have seen the uh, German there. But uh, you know, as a kid, watching uh, the news, eating my TV dinner watching the news back from Vietnam, uh, you know, I didn't really see the subtleties of the, the German helmet or anything, you know, I'm five, six, seven years old, you know, and then mm -hmm. as kids also, we're imitating the real world when we're out there playing in the dirt pile with these things too. We don't have a complete understanding what that's about necessarily, or most of us don't, but uh, yeah. Other questions? Well, thank you all very much. <laughs> Uh, oh, can I say one more thing? Yes. I think I forgot to talk. Uh, I thank everybody, Caleb, and then I didn't think of all the other people behind the scenes. Did I do that? The, yeah. Uh, there are so many people, like I said, the lighting, uh, photography, raising funds for uh, membership. And once again, I can't say, he didn't tell me to do this, can't say enough about uh, supporting your uh, local uh, art museums, but, uh, but please do so. Not that big a deal. You won't miss that money. Okay. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. very much.